Hello, today we're going to discuss George Danzig's simplex algorithm for solving linear programs. Let's start by explaining some terms. Linear programming is the problem of optimizing a linear function while subject to a set of linear constraints. The simplex algorithm computes the values of all variables in order to maximize or minimize the objective function without violating any of the constraints. Consider the following example. Suppose you have a factory consisting of two machines A and B, and you produce two products X and Y. Product X requires three hours in machine A and one hour in machine B. Y requires two hours in both machines, but machine A can only work for 80 hours and B for 60 hours. Also, product X sells for 600 pounds and Y sells for 500 pounds. This can be modeled by this linear program. Our objective function is P equals 600X plus 500Y. We would like to maximize this to make the most profit. Our two constraints come from machines A and B, as they can only work for 80 and 60 hours respectively. Machine A leads to the constraint 3X plus 2Y is less than or equal to 80, and machine B leads to the constraint X plus 2Y is less than or equal to 60. We would like to find values of x and y which will maximize the subjective function. This can be visualized graphically by plotting the two constraints to find the area known as the feasible region. This region contains all potential solutions that satisfy the constraints. We can find the optimal solution to the problem by plotting our objective function and sliding it along the region until we find the point at which it leaves. In this case, it leaves the region at point 1025. So our factory should produce 10 X products and 25 Y products. This is fine for two dimensions, but the graphical method isn't very practical for problems with three or more variables. This is where the simplex algorithm comes in. Because there's such a variety of forms linear programs can take, it is helpful to express them in a common format. The simplex algorithm requires linear programs to be expressed in what's called standard form which has the following rules. The objective function must be maximized. All constraints must be less than or equal to constraints. And all variables must be non-negative. The first step the simplex algorithm does is convert the standard form linear program into what is called slack form. This involves introducing a new variable for each of the constraints. The role of this variable is to measure the difference between the left and right hand side. So we introduce x4, x5, and x6, and set them equal to the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side. We must also have non-negativity constraints for these new variables. Throughout the algorithm, we maintain two sets, which are the basic and non-basic variables. A slack form can be represented in the following way. We have a n by n matrix A to store the coefficients in our n constraints, a tuple lowercase b to hold the values of the basic variables, a tuple c to hold the coefficients in the objective function, a tuple n to hold the non-basic variables, a tuple capital B to hold the set of basic variables, and a value v to hold the value of the objective function. The basic solution is derived by setting all non-basic variables to zero. The simplex algorithm assumes this is a feasible solution, as in it does not break any of the constraints. From the basic solution, our goal is to find a way to increase the value of the objective function. The method used by the simplex algorithm is called a pivot, which works as follows. We pick a variable to increase, which will also increase the value of the objective function. For this to happen, there must be a positive coefficient. Let's pick x1. We want to increase x1 as much as possible without violating any of the non-negativity constraints. So we find the value, we will set each basic variable in turn to zero, and then choose the tightest constraint. Constraint 1 limits x1 to 16, constraint 2 limits x1 to 22, and constraint 3 limits x1 to 6. It follows that the tightest constraint is x1 equals 6 given by the third constraint. Therefore, we will perform a pivot operation between x1 and x6. x1 is known as the entering variable, and x6 is the leaving variable. 
Performing a pivot involves rearranging the equation constraint to find x1 in terms of the other non-basic variables and substituting this into the objective function in the two remaining constraints. So x1 is now a basic variable and x6 is a non-basic variable. The purpose of a pivot is to find a slack form with a better basic solution than before. Notice that z equals 12 in the new basic solution. Here is the pseudocode for the pivoting stage of the algorithm. Lines 3 to 5 essentially rearrange the constraint in terms of the new basic variable. Lines 7 to 11 loop through each basic variable and go through each non-basic variable in the corresponding constraint and compute its new coefficient. Lines 13 to 16 compute the new objective function. Lines 18 and 19 compute the new sets of the basic and non-basic variables. Here is the pseudocode for the main algorithm. First we call initialize simplex which returns a slack form representation of the standard form linear program. The main while loop loops until all coefficients in the objective function are less than or equal to zero. This indicates that the objective function cannot be optimized further. Lines 4 to 7 calculate the bounds that each constraint places on the variable with the positive coefficient. If the variable has a coefficient of zero and a constraint, then it is unbounded. If it is unbounded for all constraints, then there does not exist an optimal solution, as the objective function can be increased indefinitely. Then we pivot around the basic variable and the non-basic variable. At the end of iteration 1, z equals 12, then it becomes 16, then it becomes 18, then it becomes 124 over 5. At this point, all coefficients in the objective function are negative, and the while loop terminates. Lines 13 to 17 output the values of the basic variables. Worst case time complexity of the simplex algorithm is big O of 2 to the n, where n is the number of constraints. The number of iterations required typically depends on the order of the pivot values used. Despite people coming up with methods of choosing the best pivots, it has been shown that these are inefficient for certain classes of the problem. It is currently unknown as to whether there exists a pivot rule for guaranteeing polynomial time all of the time. Despite this, the simplex algorithm is efficient in practice. That's all there is to it. Thank you for listening to our lesson on the simplex algorithm.